Yes. Um, Hannah Burner is not here yet, so this is the closest thing. <laughs> this is lateral. Um, I love working with Katie so much. She's a great co-producer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She's a lot shorter than me, so there's no guilt when I don't make eye contact. It's like, all right, was he joking? No, I'm not. What's up? I don't, what's the worst? Have you ever told someone you love them and then like, what was the worst response you've ever gotten to don't that? You. What? Thank you. Who said that? Don't. Someone said don't? Yeah. Would, had, would, had you respond? Uh, I cried in a cab home. Yeah, that's the appropriate response. That's pretty. What, uh, did you ever talk to the guy again? I'm still talking to him. Uh, <laughs> what? No, don't. <laughs> Why did this happen? Like college. How long you has he said I love you yet? No. Oh man, you're retarded. All right. Uh, I'm kidding. How how so? How long is this? How old are you now? Wow. He better be. He better have a huge cock. That's all I gotta say. But what else? What else? Who else has had bad responses to I love you? Anyone, anyone? Just her? She's, you know, come on, don't make her the I only one. Why. What? Why? All right, well, that's better. I like, I'm like pressing, though. What did you say when he asked? Like, I told him why. And what did, and what did he say? He doesn't say anything about himself. That's his problem. All right, I liked her answer better. <laughs> <laughs> I told the girl I loved her once, and her response was, cool beans. That was, <laughs> which is almost as bad as don't. Not as bad. Don't is the worst response ever. But Cool Beans is pretty bad, so we're... All right. <laughs> Michael was talking about the show Love on the Spectrum. I wish dating was the way it was on that show. They're, they're so blunt and honest in that show. <laughs> There's no bullshit when you date an autistic person. I was watching an episode the other day where the guy, he liked chicken nuggets more than women. He loved chicken nuggets. <laughs> And he talked about this the whole time. He's like, I love chicken nuggets. I can't be with a woman who doesn't love chicken nuggets. And then the, the girl got there, and she I think it was you. I think it was both of you, actually. Sure. <laughs> and then the girl gets there, and he's like, I got us chicken nuggets. And she's like, I don't really like chicken nuggets. And then the guy gets up, and he's like, all right, bye. And he leaves. <laughs> Why? That's how dating should be. Just very direct, very honest, no bullshit. You know, not to get a text like three weeks later, like, look, I can't be with someone who doesn't like chicken nuggets. <laughs> Hinge is my app. Anyone fuck with Hinge here? Any? You? One person. All right. I went out with a girl. I went out with a girl from Hinge, and uh, I thought it went well. You ever like think a date goes well, and then the other person totally doesn't think that? I, I texted her like a little while after the date. I'm like, I had a great time. I'd love to do it again. And she texts me back, uh, since our date, I've met someone, and it's gotten quite serious. I'm like, all right, well, we went out 20 minutes ago. So I don't really know how that's possible. I went to Miami recently. Anyone been? Anyone ever? Yeah. It was very nice. Very nice place. Very expensive. Had to compensate. Had to take Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Who's rode Spirit here before? Okay, who also, keep those hands up if they also asked you to be the pilot. Uh, <laughs> it was so bad, Spirit. Spirit might have been the worst traveling experience I've ever had in my entire life. Like, here, like I think if the planes that hit the Twin Towers on 9-11 were Spirit Airlines planes, we would have been like, oh, that was a bad accident. <laughs> Like, if Al-Qaeda's like, we've taken over the plane, we'd be like, finally, a pilot who knows what they're doing. <laughs> I, my autism's kicking in. You're not, hold on, no, 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 no. You're not Ray Romano, are you? No, right? Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. Why would he just be sitting at a comedy club watching? I don't, but, but I was sitting over there. You look. It's, it's been a long time since everyone loves Ray. Really yeah, but he's still alive. <laughs> he's still, <laughs> so you're not him. Okay, good. All right. I was standing over there and like I couldn't even focus on the show. But I'm just like, it's. Did someone else said you look like Ray Romano? I didn't say that. Well, now Yeah. Was that who you were thinking of? Maybe. No, I, I think I'm the only one who thought that. I'm in therapy. Anyone? Anyone here? Sad. That's a weird thing to cheer for. Mental illness. 
I like my therapist a lot. She's helped me, but I think like the problem I have with her is she's like too optimistic a little bit. You know, like because I like all I talk to her about is like stand up. I'm like I don't. Uh, I just say that. I'm like I don't think audiences like me. Uh, she's like, look, it doesn't matter what audiences think. It matters what you think. I'm like that's not how stand up comedy works. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? It only matters what strangers think. She texted me the other day because I was feeling kind of down. She's like, look, I want you to know you're showing a lot of growth in your sessions. I'm really proud of you. Just to fuck with her, I texted her back. I'm like, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> right now. And right now. <laughs> she got all like frantic. She's like, look, if you keep saying stuff like this, I'm going to have to send you to a professional. I'm like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> I had to clarify that it was a joke. I'm like, I'm just kidding. She's like, joking or not, I don't find that type of humor funny. And I'm like, yeah, well, it doesn't matter what the audience thinks. I'm sitting on the stool after that. That's the stool. Oh, man. I don't know. I had a rough childhood, though. That's not a surprise I'm in therapy. My dad, my dad was very homophobic. Uh, still is. He's alive. He used to think me. I'm from Long Island. Does that make does that yeah. add up a little bit? Anyone else here terrible? Anyone? Are you from? You're Ray Romano. He's from Long Island too. My dad used to think me and my cousin Brian were gay because we used to play Twister together. Does anyone remember the game Twister with the gods? He used to be like, I know what you both are doing. And then, we were eight years old, by the way. And then one time he's like, next time you guys play Twister, I'm I have to watch, which is way gayer. That's, <laughs> that's so gay. He's just, he, I told my cousin this like two weeks ago. I'm like, hey, you know, you know my dad thought we were gay together. He was like super paranoid about it for years. My cousin's like, that's insane. That's so weird. I think he said that my dick was in his mouth, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right, I see where you guys draw the line there. It's dick in mouth. All right, good. I'm a New Yorker, though. Are you, you all, we're all from New York City here? Okay, four people out of 110. I don't, where are you both from? Are you lesbians? <laughs> Why do you wish? Just do it. Me and my cousin were gay. You ever, you two ever played Twister together? <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I'm from New York City, but uh, my sister, my oldest sister, she just shut up. All right. <laughs> New York City, long enough. But my sister, she's a. Uh, my sister's from Wisconsin. Uh, my sister's fiance is from Wisconsin. Sorry, she got engaged recently to a guy from Wisconsin. She's all like paranoid about it. She's like, look, he's never been to New York City before. You know, just just do me a favor. When he gets here, show him the real New York City experience. So I mugged him. I uh, <laughs> and then I pissed on him a little bit. I feel like if you wake up with no money and just soaked in urine, that's the real New York City. Experience. <laughs> We had a real New York City moment though, right? Or, or I pick him up from the airport. It's the first time he's ever been to the city. We're driving home. We're on West 54th Street and two cars ahead of us is going to turn, but the lady can't turn because there's like a family crossing the street. And the guy in the middle keeps beeping his horn, pops his head out the window. He's like, turn your car right now. What the fuck? And the woman's like, I can't. There's people walking. And the guy's like, so run them over. <laughs> And my sister's fiance is like, wow, what a piece of shit. I'm like, I know. She's got to turn right now. This is a little ridiculous. I am from Long Island, like I said. I had to visit my older brother the other day. He's, uh, he is on the spectrum, so I can make those jokes. Uh, you can't laugh at them. You're all going to hell. But... <laughs> He just turned 22, and my parents are like, do, do us a favor, get, a, get him on Facebook. He, he, he has a bad, he doesn't interact well with people, get him on Facebook. I was a little nervous to do this, because we share a last name, and I don't know <laughs> what he's going to post online. So I set up a Facebook for him, you know, take a couple bad photos, and uh, <laughs> he starts posting. I get the notifications, and his first post is really nice. His first post was, I, post was, I went to the park today, and I pet ducks. God loves me. I'm like, that's great. 
10 minutes later, I get a not notification post. I won't let my disability stand in my way because God loves me. This is great. Eight minutes later, he posts, Hillary Clinton's a fucking whore. <laughs> and God loves me. <laughs> so that's a bit much. Anyone married here? Who, in the back? You too? All right, is your husband here? Where's your husband? Oh, that sounds like he's cheating. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That makes no sense at all. I watch a lot of murder documentaries. Those are like, does anyone, yeah, it's always white women, yeah. <laughs> you learn a lot about murderers when you watch murder documentaries. You learn, I learned one way to tell who's a murderer really easily. Uh, psychologists say you can like tell someone's a murderer. Here's what you have to do. If you look them in the eyes, for eight seconds straight, and they're men. Uh, that's usually <laughs> fellas, am I right? right? A lot of men murder their wives, which is why I asked who's married. Who, so you're... Yeah, I would be for sure the person... Well, how long have you been married yeah. for? Five years. Yeah, that's like when it happens. That's so weird. <laughs> five years. A lot of men murder their wives, and the reason they do it is to be, they have like side pussies, and they want to be with their girlfriends. So they murder their wives, which to me is crazy. Like, how could someone do that? How could someone get two women to fuck them? I don't understand. <laughs> Imagine having so much pussy you have to murder some. You're like, I, it's just, I'm overwhelmed with pussy. I gotta, I gotta get rid of some. I gotta get it out. I like Unsolved Mysteries is my favorite one because like they're way less preachy than all the other ones. Because all the other ones are like, you can't, don't, you can't get away with murder. Don't even try. You know, the truth always comes out on self mystery. It's like, oh, you could get away with it. Here's I watch a lot of serial killer documentaries uh, also. I think a lot of serial killers get caught, and I think the, the problem is that they, they always leave clues. I think that's the, where they fuck up. Because the cops always, like, eight women have gone missing. They're all linked to the same guy, and the other cop's like, oh, wait, they left clues. And he's like, oh, great, okay, perfect. We, uh, that's a new joke, and uh, it bombed. But <laughs> and that was my worst fear. That just came true, right, in front of you guys. And we got to live that together. It's hard to get 110 people to agree on one thing, but we all agreed that joke sucked uh, really bad. <laughs> I gave up drinking recently. Uh, anyone else gay here? Any? <laughs> there are a lot of benefits to quitting drinking. My skin cleared up, all right, I sleep better, but my favorite part about quitting drinking was relapsing. Uh, <laughs> that's the best. People love you when you relapse, and you get to get fucked up. It's amazing. I downloaded, uh, I downloaded an app, or like a sobriety app, uh, when I stopped drinking, and it would like send me positive messages throughout the day, like, you're the best. Like, you know, you could do it. Don't stop now. But now I s drink more than ever, probably. <laughs> but I forgot to undownload the app. <laughs> so, like, I'll still get messages every night, and it really just looks like it's encouraging me to drink more. <laughs> I was, like, doing shots the other night. I like Fireball. I just got a, I was, like, done. I'm like, I'm going to go home. I can't, I can't do it anymore. And then I got a message from the app, like, alcohol is no match for you. I'm like, you were fucking right. <laughs> I'm finishing all of these. <laughs> Any couple? Are you two a couple? Yeah. How long have you both been together for? Three months now. Nice. You think about having kids, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> If you were, all right, if you were going to have kids, what would you name them? They're going to break up. I <laughs> How about you? you would we talk, did I talk to you guys already? It's such a blur. I'm doing, all right. How long, how about? Four years. Okay. All right. You're both very attractive. Um, I would, if you had sex in front of me, I'd like it. Uh, <laughs> I'll end on this. I get writer's block sometimes. Most comics get writer's block. I was talking to an older comic, like a comic friend of mine. I'm like, what do you do when you are in creative, when you can't get creativity going? And he's like, oh, that's easy, man. Just, uh, you gotta find a car, get in a car, go for a ride. Riding in a car opens up uh, the right side of your brain, he said to me. I'm like, yeah, but that was like only for JFK, I think. I don't think that's... <laughs> All right, guys, uh, keep it going for your host, Katie.